I'll say it again. Everything in Linux is a file. This holds true for KVM, VM configuration files as well. I have touched on them briefly in previous videos, but wanted to go through one and explain what is going on. This is not this is not a video designed to explain every possible option, device, etc. available. Just a brief overview of a VM on my system. You can get a XML configuration uh, file in one of three ways. You can use the let's go ahead and just look and see which one we want to pull up here. All right, you can go ahead and do a versh dump XML and then the name. All right, that's going to go ahead and pull it up. And keep in mind, it's a lot of output, so you may want to go ahead and parse that output you know, with like less or something like that. Uh, you can also do cat Etsy libvert. QEMU Oops. All right, and this is going this is the actual full path, the actual physical location of the XML file on your system. Whoops, let's go ahead and add a sudo in there. All right, you could do the same thing there. And keep in mind, this is the actual location, physical location of your XML files on your system. It's going to be Etsy, Livert, QEMU. Now, the other way that you can do it is you can do it through, it's actually going to take this up to the top of the screen, Versh, Edit, and then we'll do, and there we go. Now, keep in mind, you can, you could, you know, you could put this into your favorite text editor, Vim, Nano, whatever and edit it that way, but the preferred method is when when editing these XML files is to use the Versh edit command. If you want inform if you want more information about configuration files, editing them and such, I'm going to leave a link to the um, to libvert.org. It's got a very detailed breakdown of XML files and will include a lot of a lot of detail on some of the things that you may want more information about. Um, I'm also going to include links to sites for more information on XML the language. Uh, as well as an, an example configuration file. It's not going to be the one I'm going to be going over here, but it gives you an idea, you know, of what they look like, you know, that you can sit there and actually see right in front of you and, you know, go through and figure out more about XML files. Now, before we jump in, I do have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like this, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell button for notification. Uh, let's get into it. So let me go ahead and pull up the actual configuration file. And this is this is actually a configuration file from one of the VMs on my on my home server. So this right here is going to be, and you can you'll be able to tell the sections that I'm talking about is there will be a gap in between them. Uh, that is not the case when it comes to these. You can see everything is just one long stream of 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 output. So that's how you'll be able to tell just as we're going through this video where I am the sections that I'm talking about. So this is the first section that we're going to talk about here. So in this in this section, the over the overarching element of this file um, is going to be the domain. And in, and in this particular case of the domain, the type of hypervisor that I'm using is KVM. Uh, you will also see this element closed at the very end of the file. Uh, this first section is also going to give you information such as the name of the VM, the UUID to identify it, as well as metadata that includes information about the OS type, which that information um, is is set up based on the information that you entered when you entered either the uh, TAC TAC OS TAC variant or TAC TAC OS info, depending on if you're using Red Hat or if you're using uh, a Debian or Ubuntu based um, server. So this next this next section is going to give us information. Um, on the memory and the CPU. Memory sets the the memory file with the memory right here, memory unit, that's actually going to set the maximum memory that is available on boot to the VM. So you're also going to have one that says current memory, which is going to be how much the VM is actually using currently. So those numbers aren't necessarily going to be the same. You know, you could we could set a max memory on um, let's say, you know, 10 gigabytes, but we only want to we only want to use, you know, two of that. 
So we can we can set that and you know that's not what's happening here. Right in here they match because I haven't set a max. So and the other thing that's going to be present here is going to be the vCPU, which indicates the number of CPU threads that have been allocated to the VM, which you can see right there. This one's only got one. All right, so in this next section that we're going to be talking about here, I'm just going to scroll down a bit. This one right here. All right, this is going to this is going to specify the type of OS to be booted uh, in the VM. It also indicates this is a an x86 AMD64 system requiring full virtualization, which you're seeing right here. It's also going to set the uh, boot. To, um, and I'm sorry, this Q35 that you're seeing right here, that's just the chipset. And then real, this is the, the the rest of it's going to vary depending on the the distribution that you're using. But this one was taken from a rail system, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux system, so that's why you're seeing this rail 9.0 here, in addition to the Q35. And then this is also going to include the boot device, which in this particular case is HD, which stands for hard drive. There's uh, it'll specify 104. It's either going to be FD for floppy drive, uh, HD for hard drive, CD-ROM, or network as the boot device. So. This next section here under features, this will this section will list any CPU machine features. Uh, the list of features is extensive. Check out the link I mentioned for more information. My this particular VM does not have any of those. That's why you're seeing it blank. So, all right, moving on to the next one. All right, so this right here, this section right here, where you're seeing the CPU mode. Uh, this is going to set requirements for CPU model. It feature uh, its features and topology can be specified in this section. In, in CPU mode, host pass through the CPU is visible to the guest uh, should be exactly the same as the host CPU. So basically, it's seeing the CPU. Things are going to be reported, you know, as far as information about the CPU as if it was on the actual host. Like so, those are pretty much going to be more or less indistinguishable with the way the information is um, provided. Now the my, migratable, this allows you to turn on and turn off features for migrating domains to a different host. All right, let's go down here to this next one where it's clock offset. All right, in this section, this is going to be the virtual hardware clock for the VM, and it uses three different timers to synchronize with QEMU uh, hypervisor. So not something you really mess with too often. Usually you can just leave that as it is. I'm not going to get into too much detail on that one. All right, so let's go ahead and go down here to this next section. All right, and in this section, this this is this section is there solely for the purposes of if the v, the VM powers off or is terminated unexpectedly, how you know how the how how Livert should react, you know how things should go. Uh, so Livert, you know, releases all resources and restarts with the same configuration. So the, at least is the way that it's laid out in this particular configuration file. All right, so let's move on to the next the next section. In this section, which is going to be this one right here with the PM. All right, what's going to be going on here is this section sets sleep and hibernate modes for the VM. They are not enabled on this particular VM. So you can see suspend a memory and suspend the disk. Uh, this should be your sleep right here, and then this should be your hibernate. So in this my particular case, it's not going to be supported on these two. So, But if you wanted to, you could select yes for those two. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one, the devices section. All right, this section is used to describe devices connected to the VM. There are tons of devices that can be connected to the VM and they're not, I'm not going to cover them all here. Refer to the link I mentioned earlier for more information. Uh, in this particular output, it had the, um, the, uh, in this particular bit, it has the, uh, it has the emulator as well as two disc. Uh, you can see the emulator, which is right here. This is actually going to, this is actually going to have the, it's going to have an element that point, the element points to the emulator binary, which is, you know, in this particular case is going to be user, libx, qemu, tat, kvm, uh, and then, um, yeah, that's where the actual binary file of the, of the uh, emulator is going to be located. And then the other, the other two are going to be the hard drive as well as the CD-ROM, which you can see right here. Uh, this is right here is going to be the disk. And then right here is the CD-ROM, and you'll and you'll notice like you know it's kind of intimidating to look at these configurations in XML file format um, when you first start doing it, but as you get more familiar with it, it's it's going to be it becomes a lot easier, and it's it's really not it's just a funky way of of, of looking at the information, and, and XML is much more um, understandable than a lot of other uh, languages out there, so 
uh, that's one thing I'm definitely grateful for. So, but yeah, before moving on to the rest of the file, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it. Give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Uh, lastly, let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any questions uh, down in the comments below. So, all right, let's go ahead and go on to the next one. This is actually one of the longer sections right here. Like, it starts right here, and it's going to go all the way down through right there. Now, we're not going to go through this one line by line just because it is a ton of output, but these are controllers for devices and interfaces on the system, you know, so how you're going to interact with those devices. You know, the system has a USB controller, a root controller for PCIe devices, and a vert IO controller for interacting with VM through serial connections in this particular example. Because that, like, whether it's going to have the serial connection will depend on other factors as well. But I'm not going to get into that. Um, just know that this particular one has a has a serial connection to it. Uh, a USB controller is for interacting with USB devices. Uh, the root controller is for the root complex, which connects the CPU and memory subsystem to the PCIe fabric, which make you know, which are made up of the PCIe devices that are connected to the system. And the Vert I/O controller is for interacting with Vert I/O devices. Uh, in this example. Uh, for interacting with the VM uh, through a serial interface, as I stated just a minute ago. So, I'm not again. I'm not going to go through this line by line, just because it's a ton of information. So, all right. And now let's go ahead and go on to the next section. And we and we've kind of touched a little bit on this one, this section before, when I covered it in the uh, VM networking part of the series. So. Go back to watch that video if you want more information about VM networking. Uh, this is the actual networking interface uh, setup. Uh, you can change many characteristics about the configuration and device. Um, yeah, and again, I've covered that in a previous video, so go back and check that one out. You can see here it's got the you know the MAC address, it's got the the model type default, uh, and then this information right here as far as the address type. So, all right. So moving on to the next section. All right, this section right here. This right here is uh, the PTY serial console for the VM. These are updated automatically, and it's recommended that you not update these things. I believe this is the one for the Versh console. I'm not 100% certain on that, but I believe that's what's that's what's here. So, all right, going on to the next one. The next one's going to be uh, means of interacting with your with your VM. This is going to be like how it how it is able to respond to your keyboard and mouse. Uh, a virtual USB port is used to receive keyboard and mouse input. These are updated automatically. It's recommended you not update these settings. Um, I, I don't mess. Most of these settings I actually don't mess with too often. Um, I'm very I, my need my my use cases and needs are not complex, so I don't usually have any reason to to add any devices or anything like that to to my particular system. All right, moving on to the next section. All right, it's going to be this this one right here. I'm just going to scroll up a bit here. The graphics type. All right, with the, you know where you can see here. All right, so basically what this is is this indicates the graphics protocol used for the graphical output, and in this particular case, it is going to be VNC, which we can see right here. All right, the next section is going to be. Um, this is going to be where we're t the the audio one here. Now this is going to this is going to set the audio backend. Uh, this VM does not have an audio backend. I'm not much of an audio file, so I don't um, I don't know the ins and outs of of audio. So if you have any more questions, go back to that link, uh, and they'll kind of be able to walk you through quite a bit more of that. Just know that that's what's going on in that section right here. All right, so moving on to the next one, we've got video here. All right, this and this 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 section right here is pretty much like essentially the graphics card of the VM. Yeah, you can see that VRAM is being allocated um, and stuff like that. So that's what's going on in this particular section. So it's your graphics card, if you will. All right, going on to this uh, this last and final section here is going to be. I'm not going to cover the mem balloon just because it's not one of those things that you're ever really going to mess with. So you know. If that's something that you desperately want covered, you know, maybe let me know down in the comments. Maybe that's something I can cover in the future. But this last section right here, this R RNG, uh, this right here is going to be for the random number generator used for various purposes uh, on the system. You know, the cryptographic purposes and, and stuff like that. So uh, after that, we can see that the device's elements are um, uh, an over 
the overarching domain element is closed, uh, which concludes the XML file we can see right there. We can see the devices ends as well as the domain and the RNG and all that kind of stuff. So cool. Yeah, that 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 covers a, a VM XML file. So check out the other videos in this series. This, this, this video continued the Linux virtualization series. Um, and don't forget to visit the links in the description for more information. Thank you very much for watching our video and have the greatest of days.